This video is dedicated to Antonio Rouse. Antonio, thank you. Omnath Locus of Creation versus That's a Deep Dwelling. With some ramp, I like the Scoot Swarm, we've got some removal, so let's keep that one. We're on the draw as well. Uh, no land for us, I'll... Yeah, I'll probably just crack this for a try land, actually. Try and fix our mana early on. Typically speaking, you often want to just keep hold of your fetches so that you can get multiple landfall triggers, but... We'll go for the team at Tricycle Land here. And then it is Naban, Dean of Iteration from our opponent. Crucible of Worlds is really good to get into. And we'll be able to play it next turn as well, thanks to this three visits. Uh, so let's see here. I think we need to be careful what colours we get into. I think Savannah is okay. Four colour deck, so we need to be careful what colours we get into. Like I said, I wouldn't mind holding up Path to Exile. Although I wouldn't have thought we'd end up using it. A Riptide Laboratory from our opponent. And they're swinging at us with the 2-1. And now, just for the sake of getting potential counter magic out of their hand, I am going to go for the Path to Exile. Yeah, they, they F6 through the turn there, so it might be that they don't have counters, or they assumed we weren't doing anything. I don't like ramping them, but Naban's not a terrible card to get rid of for us. Alright, get into swords. Maybe should have waited. Try and stick our crucible. And now they're holding up priority, but allowing us to land that. So let's go for the wooded foothills. Again, we'll hold up the swords to plowshares this time. And it's that's a deep dwelling, which we will not be able to point the swords at. So let's just fetch ourselves a tap land. We'll go for the triome, so that we don't have to play out a tap land later on. Get into a Boro. We'll go Omnath before we do anything else. And that comes in and draws us a card, gets us into Reliquary Tower. Let's play the Wooded Foothills, which will gain us 4 life, takes us back up to 30. And then we'll get another land into play here, make it a white one so that we can still hold up Swords to Plowshares. But I think we're going for Oracle of Muldaya with the mana that our commander makes us. Because this is the second land that's coming into play. So let's go for Oracle of Muldaya, and we'll play that forest off the top. Alright, Elemental Bond is not bad. Yeah, so we'll leave it there. A clone from our opponent probably goes after Omnath, maybe Oracle. I think whilst that trigger is on the stack, let's go for the Swords to Plowshares so they can't get any more value off of Omnath. They'll still get the card draw from their Omnath at least, but it did swallow up. Four of their mana there, they play the island. I don't know if they just drew into that or decided not to play it before the clone. Mind stone for them now. And I'm not making use of Thassa's flicker just yet. Okay, Genesis wave off the top. Uh, do we care about that? Don't think we do just yet. Uh, let's go for Scoot Swarm. And hopefully our opponent doesn't scoop here. They are holding priority. <laughs> yeah, they've uh, just disconnected, so instead of scooping, they've decided to just close the window, apparently. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt and see if they come back, but clearly they're worried about Scoot Swarm. Uh, what we'll be able to do here is play a couple of fetches, which is landfall four times, and it will create uh, four Scoot Swarms, as well as this one, so... Yeah, oh, actually, it'll be more than that, because each Scoot Swarm will make its own Scoot Swarm. So, yeah, it makes a hell of a lot. Anyone who's better at mental arithmetic than me will be able to figure that out, how many uh, Scoot Swarms it actually is. But, yeah, it's a lot, suffice it to say. All right, I've waited a few minutes now, and I don't have time to uh, sit here and watch my opponent time out, so I'm going to assume that they're not coming back, and we'll try and get another game in. Omnath, Locus of Creation, this time up against Elsha of the Infinite. Uh, with a pretty awful hand, it's a shame, because we've got some good lands in hand. And then, of course, you mulligan into a hand with no lands in it. I mean, yeah, we can use the Balagad Sanctuary as a tap land, and maybe untap it with the Amulet of Vigor. That means going for this. 
for some random colour on turn one, but then we've got Crucible for if we get into another uh, another land to play that with. So let's put Genesis Wave on the bottom and try this one out. Seer and Visions to start things off from our opponent. And of course they get into a Mana Crypt, into Azoria Signet, another tap land for us. So let's go for a White Source with the Prismatic Vista. We've got a triple white mana card in the deck, so we'll go for as much white as we can in the early game. Amulet of Vigor is going to pull its weight in this one, I think. No red mana from our opponent yet, thankfully. And they go in for a Transmuted Muddle the Mixture, which probably goes in for some Counter Magic. Uh, no, goes for Omen of the Sea for some Scry. And they cast that straight away. Okay. Ketria Triome, so we're just getting into all the tap lands. That's alright though. Um, we'll get out the Valakut first. I'd rather they pointed removal at Valakut than the Triome. And there's that red mana for our opponent, thanks to the scry and draw. So probably going in for their commander. There it is. We're just going in for Crucible next turn, which may well get counted. Ancient Green Warden. Alright, let's go for the Triome. In for Crucible. And yeah, that comes down straight away, so I don't think they have Spell Pierce or anything like that. Force of Will. Now going for Sahili Rai. And she will scry one and deal one damage to us. Then casting a Verge Rangers. And swing it in at us for four. Alright, another land for us. Um... Do we just want to get down the Omnath? No, I think we need to try and stick our commander at this point, although our opponent's probably got removal for it. Yeah, let's go for... Yeah, we'll have to go for the Prismatic Vista. We'll make a blue mana with this. And actually, let's go for the Omnath in our hand so that we can make a land after casting our Omnath next turn. Um, we'll just ping the Planeswalker. This is more in here for long-term card draw. This is more of a multiplayer deck, really. I'm just testing it in 1v1 and trying to get a game out to all of you with this new commander. So hopefully you look forward to a multiplayer game with Omnath Locus of Creation because there's a higher curve, a bit too high for 1v1, really. But I'm just testing out all the mechanics, like I said. Now, Thing in the Ice from our opponent. And another scry and ping from Sahili. Now sacrificing Omen of the Sea to scry 2, which takes them into a basic mountain. And now swinging in with the 3-3 three, three with first strike and the Elsha, which tells me that they can cast something off the top or out of their hand to buff it enough to kill off the Omnath, so I'll just take the damage here. I like the idea of piling plus counters onto this, so that it actually is a good blocker. So now let's attempt our commander, see if they've got any counters. They do not, surprisingly, so let's draw a card. And get into Breeding Pool, we'll go for the fetch here. That will gain us some life, we'll put a plus counter on this. I want to make this Omnath the threat, so if they've got removal they'll point it over here. So that bumps us back up to 20. Make another land. Grab ourselves a forest. That makes us four mana with our commander and another plus counter on Locus of the Royal. Uh, so I think we just go Elemental Bond. Not able to make additional land drops, unfortunately, is hurting us. But we've got a 5-5 five five to throw in the way of Elsha, at least. And a Temporal Mastery off the top for our opponent, unfortunately. So they get a couple of extra turns, or one extra turn. A couple of turns in a row. And it's Chandra, Torch of Defiance, gets rid of our commander. Plussing on the Sahili first. And then going for the plus on Chandra, that deals two damage to us. Um, do we just take hit for five? I think we have to take hit for five from Elsha. Yeah, because they do something instant speed there. Brainstorm would have had it survive if we blocked with the Omnath of the Royal. So their extra turn begins here and we might have everything bounced by Thing in the Ice. Well, there's the first thing. Magmatic Insight. Draw two cards, discard a land. Then Portent takes the last counter. 
off of the thing in the ice that turns into a 7-8. So that's probably us done for at this point. Exile the top card with the Chandra getting to Narset, part of the Veils, which I have no doubt will come down this turn. Going straight into it. Then with the Sahili Rai making a copy of the 7-8 Awoken Horror. And like I said, that's us done for. So pretty good going from the Narset player. I'm going to continue to try my luck in 1 versus 1 with this deck. Like I said, it's not a 1v1 deck. But uh, yeah, I will continue to attempt a good game with it. Problem is, if we start to do well with this deck, then players won't typically play it out. Although, <laughs> that's an interesting one, up against Locus of the Royal. Uh, that's a one lander, so let's get rid of that. Drawing into all of our expensive stuff, of course. If we had a fetch, yeah, I probably still wouldn't keep it. Let's mulligan. Alright, getting into Multani again. Uh, Scoot Swarm with fetches, I like. We've got Nature's Law as well. Let's keep that one. Get rid of Multani. And the Beast Within. And we're on the draw again at least. Alright, it's nice to see our opponent not getting into fast mana on turn one. Uh, we will go for a tap land of our own. Is it Signet from our opponent? Let's drop the forest so that we can go for our nature's law. And maybe we just get a triome out of the way here. Yeah, we'll go for the team of triome. Runaway Steamkin. And that's an elemental, so... They've probably gone Elemental Tribal so that they can make use of the plus counters and everything. We are going for Scoot Swarm. And we'll have to hope it doesn't eat removal. Just in case it does, let's go for the Flooded Strand. So that we can get at least a couple of insects into play. In no rush to crack the fetch land though. Ristic Study from our opponent means that we'll have to pay for our commander coming into play. And keeping the runaway Steamkin at bay. Let's see what we draw into here. Oracle of Muldaya, I don't mind. So let's just go... Yeah, let's go Reflecting Pool. Our opponent's only got two cards in hand, so... Playing a bit of a Magic Online meta game here, but... Let's try and keep them from scooping to us by allowing them to draw a card with the Ristic Study. And that way we can keep our fetch in play as well. We want to keep our fetches so that we can trigger landfall at instant speed. All right, Volcanic Island is good to play off the top. Emil the Blessed, not something I would go for in 1v1 typically, but like I said, like I've said a few times, I'm just play testing it. We get another Scoot Swarm now, so this is when we get to test the power of Scoot Swarm. Let's swing in with an insect, see if they want to trade. Highly doubt they do. But yeah, Emil is in here to flicker our commander for card draw. Um, don't know if I necessarily like the idea of it, to be honest. I'll probably just go for... Yeah, I'll probably just go for some kind of blue card draw in the end. Well, there's the fast mana. Mana Crypt from our opponent. Takes them into Lightning Greaves. And they can get their commander out here. If they tap the mana correctly. <laughs> Keep putting the green mana into the Signet. There we go. So Omnath coming into play. That triggers the runaway Steamkin, putting a counter on that. They'll be able to ping something here. Okay, getting rid of the Oracle of Moldaya, fair enough. Don't think I'm bothered about drawing into Emil, so I'll probably go for the Flooded Strand before the end of the turn. Let's see if they want to swing in here. They do not. So let's shuffle some stuff away. Try and draw into something else. Get another Triome into play. And now we've got four Scoot Swarms, so we're certainly going to swarm the board. Alright, Raminap Excavator is really good. We just need Azusa or some kind of um, multiple lands a turn spell. Let's drop our Omnath. We'll give them a card again with the Ristic Study, trying to keep them from scooping on us. Draw a card with Omnath. Alright, burgeoning, so... Yeah, we drop the burgeoning. Oh, actually, we... 
Yeah, we go ramming out Excavator first, don't we? So we get a bunch of Scoot Swarm triggers when we play the Misty Rainforest. We will gain 4 life with Omnath. And then we have to crack the Misty Rainforest. And this will get another land into play. Hopefully we don't break Magic Online with the Scoot Swarm triggers. Let's play Tropical Island. <laughs> and just flooding the board with Scoot Swarms. That gives us a bunch of mana with Omnath. So let's play the Burgeoning. And we can pay into the study this time. And then let's get down the Ramunat Excavator as well. Oh, actually, I was thinking Burgeoning was um, Exploration. So Burgeoning doesn't necessarily help us here. Uh, so let's just pay into the study. And we'll have to go without Fairy's Protection. Now we can start turning these Scoot Swarms in sideways. They can just chump a couple here, but we still lay some damage on them. So our opponent needs to be getting into a board wipe, really, because after next turn we've got Teferi's Protection held up. And we can start going for Raminap with Misty Rainforest. Kodama's Reach for them first. And that triggers the Locus of the Royal, putting a plus counter on their Steamkin. Then they play a land triggering Burgeoning, we've got an empty hand unfortunately. And another plus counter going on the red elemental. They can't target their own Omnath thanks to the Lightning Greaves. Then a Day's Undoing, each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into the library and draws seven. Well, hopefully we get into a fetch here so that we can still make use of the ramming out. Uh, and we do not, surprisingly. What we do have is Rishkar's expertise. So, let's go for. No, and our opponent scoops, unfortunately. That would have been an interesting turn. We would have drawn into four cards. And, ah, oh, that is a real shame, because I did want to play the Felidar Retreat. That would have been really good. Plus counter on each creature we control. So we were probably winning next turn. Uh, we draw four cards with Rishkar's Expertise. And drop the Felidar Retreat for free. And then it would have been a case of starting to make lands... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Make a land. Play the three visits. That is landfall again. Then we can play the Spring Bloom Druid off of the mana that Omnath gives us, triggering landfall even more times, putting more plus counters on our stuff with the retreat and turning everything sideways in for lethal. So, just so happens that we were getting them next turn anyway. Would have been nice to see it, but uh, yeah, that's about as good a game as I have gotten tonight with the Boogeyman, which is Omnath, Locus of Creation. I've said it multiple times here, this is a multiplayer deck, so hopefully you look forward to seeing it in a multiplayer scenario. Just haven't had a chance to get a game together with patrons yet. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.